All right, you guys, what's up? My name is Michael Rutherford. I'm in San Diego. I'm incredibly excited to uh, cut a very quick video for you. This is something that I've been learning from Brian Underwood for 10 or 12 years. It's one of the very first lessons that he gave me. It has to do with, uh, I'm going to give you one word. I'm going to write it on my little handy dandy whiteboard. It has to do with speed. Uh, so if you want your business to go fast, keep watching this video. So when somebody gets started in your business, one of the first things you want to ask them is, do you want to go fast or do you want to go slow? Does that make sense? Do you want to go fast or do you want to go slow? You just want to take their temperature to find out to the speed that they want to go. You're kind of asking for permission. You're kind of taking a little bit of a temperature check, a litmus test, a, a vitals test, just to see what their interest is, to see what their level of ambition is. So this video is going to be about speed. This video is going to be about ambition. This video is going to be about hitting a ping pong ball to somebody to find out if they hit it back to you and at what velocity they hit it back to you. Because I want to spend 15, 20 minutes. I don't know how long. When did I get? But 15, 20 minutes to talk about what Brian taught me, which is how do you develop, how do you identify, and how do you explode and replicate leaders inside of your business? The word speed is part of it. The word engage is another part of it. We're going to get into that in a moment. Let me tell you the biggest difference if you're looking to take exponentials to your team. Most people are out trying to find leads. And we'll talk about ACE. We're going to talk about attracting and connecting and approaching and creating interest from people. Leads is a big part of our business. And we're also going to talk about leadership. We're also going to talk about leadership development. Most people are focused on leads and they never develop leaders. It's a constant revolving door of leads that never turns into leaders. So if you're interested in the leadership part to this, if you're interested in the infinite amount of leads coming in through your team to start developing pillars of leadership, keep watching. It's something that I've been incredibly passionate about for, I don't know, 10, 12 years since Brian and I started working together. And it's one of those things that you constantly sand down the edges on. How do you identify whether somebody might be a, a leader eventually? How do you identify whether somebody might be an achiever? How do you cultivate and develop leadership in somebody? How do you then ultimately sort of give them almost like a like a mother eagle is letting the eagle, eaglets out of the nest? How do you kind of hit them off the nipple, if you will, and send them off on their way to lead? How do you not hamstring them as the leader? Mitch Newman will say, how do you not, uh, you know, you, you don't inspire leadership if you're the only one doing the leading. So if those topics make sense to you, if those topics have triggered something in you and you're like, oh, I want to pay attention to this, what I'm getting ready to share with you is takes gives you the ability to go from making, you know, ten thousand dollars a month to ten thousand dollars a week to ten thousand dollars a day, and what that means is it's not about signups, it's not about how many people you can enroll, it's about what you do with the people that you enroll. It's about swatting and swimming. Here, here here's the swat and here's the swim, on the people that you get started in your business. Because there's people watching this that have signed up 10,000 people, but they're not doing $200,000 a month in their business. And then there's other people that have signed up 200 people that are doing $10 million a month in their business. What's the difference? It's not who they enroll. It's the same people coming into different people's businesses. It's what you can create with the people that you bring in. So hopefully some of this is making some sense. We're going to use a little bit of the whiteboard and kind of dig into what do you do when somebody gets started but if you haven't written this down, I want you to write this word down because everything we're going to talk about now is based on speed. You can write this sentence down. I heard Brian say it years ago, speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. A couple visuals that'll work. If you've ever gone to like the Indy 500 or Talladega or one of those uh, hillbilly race things, those, <laughs> those NASCAR races, they have what's called a pace car. P-A-C-E, a pace car. The pace car goes out first. The pace car goes out first, and then all the other race cars are sort of chasing or following the pace of the pace car. The pace car sets the pace. In our business, I'm the pace car for my business. You're the pace car for your business. And as the speed of the leader goes, the speed of the pack goes. So I'll take just a moment and talk about what speed looks like. I'll tell you what speed doesn't look like first. What speed doesn't look like, what slow is, is, hey, welcome to Ketones. Let me know when you get your box in the mail. Not that powerful of a sentence. You have a new person who just bought a box, a 10-day challenge kit. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what speed looks like. They don't know what's possible. They don't know what they're supposed to post online. They don't know anything. 
It's like a newborn baby. You just brought it home from the hospital. You set him in the crib and say, let me know if you need anything. Show of hands, how many of you have ever said that to a new promoter on your team? Let me know how I can help you. All right, man, we'll go get them. Good luck. Or somebody buys a 10-day challenge kit or they get uh, uh, you know, a couple, two, three boxes or the reboot. And you go, let me know when you get your kit in the mail. That's a slow way to build your business. You can do whatever you want and I'll love you no matter what. We'll support you no matter what. But if you want to build speed, if you want to build depth, if you want to really grow your team, if you really want to develop a business around the entire world, one of the things that's really going to be determined, or one of the things that will be determined on your speed is whether you're setting a pace for your team. For instance, I'm on the phone with somebody a couple of days ago and she says, I said, hey, when you put your first Facebook post up, how did it go? She signed up the day before. And I said, when you put your first Facebook post up, how did it go? And she goes, well, I haven't put it up yet. And I'm like, why not? I thought you had goals. I thought you had ambitions. I thought you wanted to get out of credit card debt. I thought you wanted to start a new career. I thought you wanted to you know, go on spring break this year with your kids once flights start opening back up. And, and she's like, well, and here's the magic word. She goes, I haven't got my product yet. So then I messaged the lady that she's enrolled by and I said, hey, have you not hand delivered speed and pace? Have you not hand delivered a five or a 10 or a 20 pack of ketones to your new girl so she doesn't have to sit and wait? And she's like, I need to do that. I should get over there today. I said, well, you should have got over, and I could be critical if you want. I said, you should have got over there yesterday. When she was ordering, you should have drove across town to her house, given her a pack to take a picture with. She could have put a post up on Facebook and said, I'm so stoked. I just got my first order of ketones in. Bring on the skinny booty, baby. And she could have got our first post up before the order went through. We didn't do that. So what's the next best option? Well, the order is in. Maybe she could go to her front window, but you got to coach her on this. She's going to go to the front window, look like this, or go out in the front yard like she's looking for the UPS man. And she goes, let me know if you see the UPS man. Homeboy's got my ketones. Your girl's trying to lose 10 pounds by, the, by Valentine's Day or whatever, right? I'm in a wedding in three months. I got to get my skinny on. Or, man, I'm tired of yelling at my kids. I need some you know, happy mama juice, right? You got to coach her what to say. So she just places her order, you give her instructions and directive coaching on say this, post this, make it look like this. Specifics. She goes and puts the post up and then literally within hours, hours, she's got two or three friends interested. Yeah, but she's only a customer. Do you do that with customers? Your customers have goals. Your customers have credit card debts. Your customers have old used cars that fall apart on them, don't they? Your customers have all sorts of goals. You know what? Your customers don't like vacation? Yes, they do. Your customer don't want a brand new Jeep lifted with ketones all over it? Yes, they do. Your customers don't wish your customers don't want help around the house, somebody doing the yard, somebody doing the dishes. They do. Your customers want help too. Your customers want all the same things that you want. They're just not sure they can do our business. That's why they're a customer. But if we can set the speed and set the pace of every single person, the main thing, the main thing that hopefully this video gives you is an understanding of how you engage people. How do you engage people? Because we talk so much about ACE. We talk about attract, and then we talk about connect, and then we talk about experience and enroll, right? This is ACE. But I'm telling you, this is only one part of it. ACE is all about attracting and approaching people and creating leads. It's really what it is. And you may love the word leads. You may hate the words leads. That's okay. Leads just means interested people coming into the conversation. But what do you do with the leads? What do you do with a new customer? What do you do with a new promoter? I'm going to give you a visual that I hope makes lots of sense. And it's one of the things that Brian's so obsessed with. And if you ever talk to him, he'll say, how's it going? And you go, oh, it's going great. And he goes, great doesn't tell me anything. Who's new in your business that you're excited about? Show of hands if you know what I'm talking about. Show of hands if you know what I'm talking about. How often when you talk to Brian does he say, who's new in your business that's on fire? If everyone else quit but that one person stayed, your business would be just good. Who is it? Who are you the most excited about? Who's shown the most promise? Who stays around? Who's available? Who's on fire? Who's hitting goals? Who's crushing the leaderboard? It's about engaging the new customers and the new promoters that you bring in because it isn't about that new person it's what can happen through that person. It's what happens, like when you meet a new person, a new customer promoter, it isn't just Joe Schmo. 
It's Joe Schmo, his wife, their three kids, mom, dad for him, mom, dad for her, aunt, uncle, cousin, brother, sister for him, aunt, uncle, cousin, brother, sister for her. When Joe Schmo joins, 15 families are one text away from what is this? How does this work? So the first chunk to me is creating interest. It's creating leads. It's that ace. It's approach. It's contact. I'll write it up here. Uh, I'll just write approach and contact. And then if you've approached and contacted people, do you engage them? Some of us are the best in the world at approaching contact. Here's the visual I want you to have. Have you ever been on a fishing boat? Or could you ever picture a fishing boat? A fishing boat has got somebody standing off the side of the boat. I'm not a fisherman. Standing off the side of the boat and they're catching fish. And forgive the comparison to Joe Schmo and a, a bass or a bluegill or a catfish. But you have somebody catching fish off the side of their boat. And a fish comes over that's like, wow, look at this 12-pound bass. And they take it off. They've wrestled him for a while. They get the hook out of his mouth. And then they put him on the floorboard of the boat because they're in the business of catching fish. And they put the fish on the floorboard of the boat and then they go cast out a shh, and they're catching another fish. Meanwhile, that fish over there has not had any oxygen. It's just sitting there by itself. It's not turning itself into a fish dinner. It's not turning itself into a lunch and it's certainly not feeding a village. So he catches, whoa, he's got a big old bluefin tuna. Bluefin tuna comes over, that bass or bluegill is starting to fizzle away and you know, doesn't have any oxygen left. The, bl the bluefin tuna hits the deck. Now you got two fish there and you just keep ringing over fish, more fish, more fish, more fish. And you got an unbelievable lead source, a spigot that's just spitting out interested people on ketones. The engagement in the mobilization, you could write that word down. I don't want to write it. It's too long. But the engagement and the mobilization of all of the people that you got is like catching a fish out of the water and then Emerald, the chef, standing on the boat like this. And if the goal is to feed people with the fish you catch, not just catch them and kill them because you're weird. But if the goal is to catch fish and then feed people, how cool would it be if you had Emerald standing in your boat? So I want you to think of yourself as somebody that's catching fish. And I want you to think of your rank six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or legend as Emerald standing in your boat. And as soon as you catch a fish into the boat, which is a mom who's ambitious, which is a dad who's, you know, one, who has goals. It's a mom and a dad who together have credit card debt. They don't love their jobs. They want to go change lives. That's who Emerald's an interested person catching your interested family. Emerald is your champ 10 who's like, show me who you have. For all of you, Brian is an emerald for you. He's a Bobby Flay for you. I hope that makes sense. He's a chef for you who can take your raw material mom and dad interested person who just bought a challenge pack or just bought the Brand Builder Max pack and they're like, hey, I have goals, I have ambitions. I'm a new person. I want to do something with this. Their, their new energy, their new ambition and they're just excited. Maybe they're in a new community, a new city. Maybe they are a little bit different than you. They work at a different place. They're a different gender or race or age or build or whatever. And then your pro champ, who's the professional chef, is going to take your raw material fish and go make a meal out of it. They're going to go feed a village out of it. It's not just one fish. It's an entire boat full of fish when you get one ambitious person. But I'll never want you to forget the image of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. How many of you sponsor a lot of people? You bring a lot of people in, but you got a boat boat floorboard full of dead fish guts and dead fish skeletons. Does that visual make sense to you? So the goal is to not let them hit the ground. The goal is to connect them. The goal is to engage them and mobilize them in a way that the person that you're working with, the champ sixes, sevens, the pro champs that you're working with, have the ability to reach into that raw material and say, hey, Mary, what's up? John says that you're just getting started on ketones. He said you lost like five pounds in your first week. That's crazy. If this is the new person, this is the prospect, and this is you, and this is the rank seven that you're working with, the rank seven that you're working with is using your new relationship to meet this new family, this new, this new couple that just got started. And the goal is to give you some relief so you can keep fishing, so to speak. And they can go right to this brand new excited person and say, hey, what do you like so far about this? What have you enjoyed so far about it? If you could wave a magic wand at the product, what do you want it to do? 
oh man, I want to lose five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I want to sleep better. I want to not yell at my kids. I, you know, I like to get more, more, um, you know, more physically fit. I'm 45. I like to get healthier. Oh, that's cool. Now, had y'all thought about sharing this at all? Or, you know, did your mama teach you to share? Uh, I like to say that. Did your mama teach you to share? Or are you one of those don't tell anybody the good news stuff kind of guys? Okay, cool. Well, we can charge you full price or we can give it to you for free. Totally up to you. What are you thinking? Had you thought about sharing it? Did you think of anybody? You can write this sentence down. Have you thought of anybody that if they were eavesdropping this call, they would be interested? You just ordered a few boxes. If you took one of those boxes and pieced it off five here, five here, five here, five here, who's three or four or five people, not a hundred, who's two or three people that you would want to share a few packs of this with that you think they'd be into it? You can write this sentence down. Who do you know that dot, dot, dot? You said you cut hair. No way. That's cool. Who do you know that's also cut hair that has had a little bit of a weird, you know, hiccup in their income that you think if they were listening to this, they would be going, tell me a little bit more. You said you've taught and been a teacher and a coach and stuff at the local high school. How long have you done that? 20 years. No way. Do you know any other teachers whose careers are a little bit up in the air and a little bit weird? By the way, the person who's filming this holding my camera as a teacher, career is a little bit weird at the moment. Things are weird. Like things are just weird. Who do you know that might want to try the product? Can you think of two or three people right now that if I drove them a sample with you tomorrow, this is called the keto drive-by. Who's a person or two that you can think of and that you know well enough that if we jumped in the car and I took a couple of my samples and we drove to their house and shook them one up and poured it in their mouth, who do you know that would drink a sample because you told them to? Cool, let's go. Your sister, is she cool? Call her, tell her we're coming. Text her the campfire video. Tell her we'll be there in 15 minutes. Get her esophagus ready. Remember we talked about speed. We talked about pace because it's about, it's about creating new interest, having a lead flow of new people coming in, and then making sure nobody slips through the cracks, engaging and mobilizing customers and promoters. I want you to write down on a piece of paper how good are you at engaging customers and how good are you at engaging promoters. And then below that, I guess you could rate yourself if you wanted to for fun. How world-class are you at converting customers to promoters? And how comfortable are you at even talking about our promoter model? Because guess what? As you're approaching new people and new people are coming in, and then your champ six or seven is engaging those new people or your enroller, your sponsor is going, oh man, I saw you brought up. I just met a lady the other day. She's had 33 signups in January. Her name's, I think it was 35 maybe. Her name's Kyrie. She's in Tacoma area. I don't know where, which is also where Jen's from. So this Kyrie girl's got, I don't know, 30, 35 signups. So I get on the phone with one of the guys that's that whose team she's on. And I said, who's this person? 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 I don't know. 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 And I'm like, those are fish coming into your business's boat. And they're boom, going right to the floorboard. And I said, man, these are human beings that just took their visa out and popped for a box or two or three or became promoters, bought the Brand Builder Mini or the Brand Builder Max, or maybe they bought the Challenge and the Reboot. And somebody got them interested, approached them and contacted them, connected them into some videos, connected them into a call, connected them into a, a group maybe. Now, if somebody's not engaged, she's put in 35 people. Do you think she's just got all the free time in the world to engage everybody? As part of this, you got to connect them in. As part of this, somebody else has kind of got, got to get their hands on them, got to get their fingerprints on them. The fisherman's got to involve a chef to fillet up the fish and make a meal out of it. I mean, I want you to picture not just one person catching fish, not just one boat with 10 fishermen on it catching fish, and then two or three like chefs just wheeling out wheelbarrows full of fresh fish. I want you to picture Forrest Gump after the big storm knocked out him and Lieutenant Dan's boat. Can you picture this? What happened to Forrest Gump as soon as the storm knocked out all the other shrimp boats? We're switching the shrimp. What happened to all the other shrimp boats? They were all gone. They were all wiped out. There's only one shrimp boat left in town. What happened? Forrest and Lieutenant Dan immediately, we must have had 13 Jennies. They opened up another boat, another boat, another boat, another boat, another boat, another boat, another boat. Another boat. And each of those boats not only had different fishermen in it, shrimp, I don't know what you call them. I think you still call a person that fishes for shrimp a fisherman. <laughs> a 
but they had fishermen in all of the boats and captains in all of the boats. And all of a sudden now he wasn't climbing on one of these boats trying to catch shrimp himself. It was all of a sudden a team effort. I want you to visually picture your prove it business, not as some little regional team thing where you're getting some customers in the ketone conversation. That's fantastic. But I want you to visualize this global, massive, monstrous referral network of moms, dads, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, dogs, cats, you name it, neighborhood drunks, everybody, referring in a person here and there, referring in a mom, referring in a sister, referring in a cousin, in this massive, massive environment and ecosystem of curious people going, tell me more about this, I wanna try it. And then posting on Facebook, hey, I just got this new drink. Apparently my friend's lost three pounds and sleeping good and hasn't yelled at her kids. Have you all heard of it before? And they're posting and they're sharing and it's growing. The sponsors and the pro champs sixes and sevens are engaging all these people. And then watch this. I'm gonna write a word down that most of you won't use today, but somebody's doing it to you. It's called tap rooting. Tap rooting is probably, what if you've been in my, part of my business, it's how I know you. And you can, I don't know where you all live. If you live in New York or California, this term is probably not valuable to you, but it's called a bird dog. A bird dog is someone, like a bird literally goes out, or a dog goes out to find the bird, like to find the bird you just shot. And you can think of it like this, somebody that's going to go out hunting with you, somebody, that's a strong word, I know, somebody that's going to go out and find fish with you and for you, somebody that's a lead, hey, I got one, I got one, I got one. I'm, I've had so many ketones, I'm jumping around so much. But when I was a little boy, we used to go fishing in like Caesars Creek and my dad would go, if you get you a big one, holler at me. And we'd fish with these little Fisher Price fishing rods. And if we got a fish, my brother and I would go, dad, dad, dad. And then guess what would happen? We would alert my dad, almost like a metal detector going off. We got a big one, we got a big one. Somebody that's tap rooting a team of people has people saying, I got one. Dude, I got an ambitious mom, she's from Iowa. She just hit GoPro. She's been in for four days. Her Facebook post had 20 comments. She's this and she's this and she's this. She's got dreams. She's ambitious. She's got influence. She's following directions. Oh my gosh. So as your team is growing and you start tap rooting the business, and some of this is going to go right over some of your heads, and that's okay. If you have a business and you have an organization, if your team volume and your group volume are the same, it's because no one on your level three's done anything yet or no one on your level four's really done anything yet. What does that mean? That the telephone game hasn't replicated. The telephone game hasn't, it's not gone any deeper. If you want it to grow depth, these are the kinds of things that are gonna create it. You can't be that smart. You can't be that good. You can't be that awesome because it won't replicate. There should be simple tools, simple strategies, simple posts and if you can picture yourself like Forrest Gump and Lieutenant Dan, there's 13, 15, 25 boats, a fleet. Today, restaurants are all over the world. I know it's not really the same thing, but Forrest Gump restaurants, they're all over the world. And you're sort of the, the ringleader, if you will, the master um, of your own huge global business because you created speed, you created a pace, and people have been able to create simple action. And then as the person that's digging through, almost like you're digging for gold in this massive pile of dirt, you're sorting and sifting all the hundreds of people that have come in, all the thousands of people that have watched a video, all the people that have done a ketone delivery. If you're not doing hand-delivered keto drive-bys, dude, go do it, take a picture, say, look, five packs of 35 bucks, or I'll give you a six pack for free if we take a selfie and you put it on Facebook and you tag me. Those little teeny things, if you're telling people exactly what to do, how to post, what to say, you're gonna hear other videos where they're talking really specifically about those things. But if you're launching people, you're not just signing them up, but you're launching, oh, do you see that? Awesome. That was so cool. You're not just enrolling people, you're not just signing them up and getting a sale. That's transactional, that's not what we're here to do but we're genuinely engaging and mobilizing people and then we're tap rooting into those organizations and you're reaching through somebody and saying, let me go help you launch your business. Let me give you some specific strategies and as you encounter interested people, we can kind of tag team them almost like a relay race, almost like 
you know, again, the fisherman and the chef tag teaming the meal together. Somebody's got to catch it. Somebody's got to fillet it and serve it and cook it. Think of this like that, you guys. And I promise you, if you have a couple of these things, if you forget everything, and you remember this, speed, the word pace, and engage. I guess I'll circle this one too. Are you operating with speed? Who's setting the pace for your business? You or somebody else? Did the new girl decide how fast she was going to go or does she even know? Most people don't even know if they're going fast. Are you fast? I don't know. Compared to what? My kids ask, about, Dad, are we rich? I don't know. Compared to what? Depends. So were you moving with a sense of urgency? I don't mean rushing. I mean a sense of urgency. Are we operating every day? And I'll give you one last visual and then I'll shut my mouth. Do we have a certain level of speed and a certain pace to our business as if your kid got lost at Disney World? This sucks. I hope no one on here's kids ever been lost at Disney World. Mine has for like a split second. You've all been there before where you're at Disney World, you're getting ready to get on It's a Small World and your two-year-old is standing on the other side of the churro cart. And where'd he go? And in a split second, your whole world stops, doesn't it? You freaking freak out. And then all of a sudden, you start terrorizing the place. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And then all of a sudden, he just comes walking out, and he's right there. Would you operate with that level of sense of urgency if you've misplaced your, your frozen lemonade? No. If you misplaced your tigger tail sitting on the bench where you're... By the way, those are delicious. If you don't know what a tigger tail is, uh, you should. Uh, if you misplaced your tigger tail, would you operate with that level of just psychoness? No, probably not. Why? Because it's called sense of urgency. It's called speed. It's called pace. And to what speed and pace do you set for your business? I don't mean blow people out. I don't mean rush through people, ignore them, and just go, go, go. I mean, engage with people and find out almost like triage, almost like taking someone's temperature. At what degree do they want to do this? And do you set the pace for the race for your business or do you let other people do it? And I'm just telling you, in the career that I've had working with Brian and Prove It and, and before this, that's a skill that I've had to sand down the edges on. And it's just baked into my subconscious. When I meet someone, I go, man, nice to meet you. Uh, the first thing I'm thinking of is how can I support them? What do they want out of this? And then as far as it gets to the business, I want to know who's standing behind them that they're thinking of that they think would rock this with us as a customer, as a promoter, or as a whatever. So... What's the first thing I want you to do? Take inventory of whether you're doing these things and just get started in them. Start engaging people in a different manner and speed up the process. Turn up the heat a little bit and let those visual reminders stay with you. Are you letting fish die in the floorboards of your boat or are you engaging the people that you're working with to make sure that there's a flow to your team and that it's simple enough that people can join it and get after it and be successful? So. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.